Okay, as usual for the first uh, class, first session of the class, I will uh, show you the uh, RPP document, eh, which is the Rancangan Pengajaran and Pembelajaran, eh, uh, the lecture plan. Okay, so, semua boleh nampak, eh, saya punya screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, doctor. Okay. Boleh, doctor. Okay, good. Okay, uh, TCS, uh, so you see that the synopsis of this course, uh, this course introduced the fundamental in analog and digital communication system comprises of, uh, yang lain tolong mute, eh? comprises of analysis and signals and noise, generation of analog and digital modulation schemes, uh, transmission lines, antennas, and wave propagations, and part of the complete system in the communication. So finally, the topic discussed related with the current application in communication systems. So you see that in this subject, you will learn, uh, you will learn the fundamental of communication system. Uh, some of the topics in this subject are related, or you can say that uh, duplicate with uh, other courses. Okay. Uh, for example, like uh, uh, antenna, uh, EMG, uh, digital com. Okay, so you, you're gonna see later that some of the topic are uh, duplicates. You will learn again in the other subjects as well. Okay, some of the topics. Okay, no, so no problem. So the um, um, the lecturers, uh, there are two sections, uh, Mr. Ezri and me. So Ezri uh, will be the coordinator of this subject. Okay. So you see that the lecture time is three hours. Uh, and then we have a course, a three course learning outcome, uh, PLO1, PLO8, and also PLO10. So what is this? Uh, these are the things that will contribute in your PO achievement in your SMAP. Okay, if you see in your SMAP, there's the there are bar graph and also the spider web okay so that one uh, uh, the the marks from that uh, graph and also the spider web comes from uh, all the courses that have been taken so for this course it includes uh, three plos uh, program learning outcome plo1 8 and 10 so this course will contribute to this PO achievement in your SMAP. Okay, akan ada uh, uh, subjek ini akan menyumbang kepada tiga PO achievement dalam kamu punya SMAP. Uh, so, all the assessment in this course will be divided into these three CLOs. Okay, course learning outcome. Okay, so uh, I hope that you can do your best, okay, in order to get a good marks. Okay. So you see that um, uh, C is uh, C4 is for cognitive domain. Okay, cognitive domains we will assess you through uh, test, quiz, uh, final exam. Okay, and also some uh, of the project reports. So all of those will contribute to the CLO1. And then for the CLO2 and 3, it will contribute to A2. A2 is the effective domain, uh, your, uh, your, your heart, uh, your soul, I mean your, uh, your attitudes, okay? A for the attitudes. And then another one is for, uh, I think this one is supposed to be P4, until I can check balik, eh? So another one should be the psychomoto. Okay, so CLO2 and 3 will be assessed through your project work. Okay, project work contributes for CLO2 and 3. So if you ask me whether this course is uh, difficult or not, uh, you should see the level of cognitive domain, C4. C4 is the medium, intermediate level. Okay, so kalau ada kawan kamu tanya, ECS ni susah ke tak sebenarnya? Uh, so, kalau nak dilihat secara formality, 
dia berada pada level 4. Okay, the highest level would be level 6. So, level 4 is up to the level of analysis. Okay, up to the level of analysis. So, this ECS is intermediate level. So, siapa yang kata ECS tu susah, tu bohong eh sebenarnya. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, effective, uh, your attitudes, this one is up to level 7. Sorry, uh, attitude is up to level uh, yeah, level 5. Sorry, level 5 maximum. And this one I think is supposed to be psychomotor. Saya rasa ni ada silap, nanti saya akan check balik. So, psychomotor is your movement, eh? your movement, how you react. Uh, in your projects, how you contribute in your project, that one uh, is under the CLO3. Okay. Uh, sekejap eh, ada kawan kamu baru masuk rasanya. Okay. And you see that uh, this one we have uh, give what are the, the, the assessment types uh, for this uh, subject. Okay, for CLO1 we have uh, online test, quiz, final exam. So all uh, lecture session, all the assessments will be conducted online. Okay, uh, maybe you are not going to meet your group members. Maybe so you only meet online. So please make sure you uh, you do keep in touch with your friends um, in many times. Okay, dalam dalam banyak masa bukan hanya seminggu sekali eh. Please make sure you meet your uh, you virtually meet your group members more than once a week. Okay. And for CLO2 and 3, as I mentioned, it is uh, the assessment will be in terms of project, uh, project report, project presentations, uh, and also some uh, video uh, presentations. Okay. So, uh, skill applicable, communication skills, uh, digital skill, teamwork skill, and also numeracy skill. Okay. So, these are the skills that learn in the course of study which will be useful and utilized in other settings okay ah so these are the uh, the topics okay so in ecs we have five topics okay five chapters from chapter one until five so chapter one is the introduction to communication systems uh, you will learn the basic communication systems uh, about transmitter and receiver and then chapter two, you will learn about the noise in the system. Chapter three is about analog modulation. Okay, so this includes uh, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and also phase modulation. So this chapter three uh, include a, a, a modulation technique and also the demodulation techniques. Okay, so uh, in this subject, Chapter 3 is the core topic. Okay, chapter 3 is the core topic. They are the topic yang, yang utama. Okay, in this subject. So, topic yang paling banyak sekali diajar adalah chapter 3. And these topics contributes uh, maybe in your project as well and also for the test and final exam. And then, uh, number Topic number four is uh, digital modulation and transmission. Uh, so this is about, uh, you will learn about digitizations, uh, digital modulation and demodulation techniques in chapter four. Okay. And then uh, chapter five, uh, transmission line, wave and propagations. So you see, uh, you will learn three subtopics, which are the transmission line, uh, actually, there's an antenna here. So, so this topic has been reduced to two only. Eh? Okay. So previously, uh, chapter five is chapter five is about transmission line, antenna, and wave propagations. So you will learn about the transmission line, about uh, a little bit about the antenna, and also about the wave propagation. So actually, there are three subtopics in this uh, chapter. So you see that in chapter four, you also learn this topic in uh, digital communication subject. Okay. And for chapter five, you also learn these topics 
in uh, wireless and propagations subject, antenna and propagation subject, and also in the EMG, electromagnetic uh, compatibility, EMC. Eh? EMC. So, topik ini juga ada diajar dalam kursus yang lain. Okay. And the total learning hours going to be 42 hours throughout the semester. So, we have 14, uh, 14 weeks, okay, in one semester. So, these are the assessments. So, we're going to have one quiz only, which contribute to 15%. And then we have quizzes. Uh, I think we have two quiz. We have two quizzes. Uh, both contributes. Both quizzes contributes to five percent. And then we have project. Project is about uh, twenty eight marks. Okay, twenty eight marks for projects. A very big marks. Eh? So make sure you do your best for the project. Okay, project in it tidak. Uh, tidak sukar, it is not difficult, you can do it uh, with your group members. And then, the good thing is that we have attendance marks. So, if you come to the class, you're going to get marks. Okay, all uh, for the marks, 14 weeks uh, of attendance contributes to 2% of the coursework. Uh, attendance ada markup. Uh, tapi jangan risau, eh, untuk minggu pertama, for the first week, I will not count the attendance uh, marks. I will start count uh, for the second week. Because uh, this week, maybe uh, there are some students who hasn't... Uh, who ha uh, some students who haven't uh, registered uh, this subject yet, maybe. Because uh, this week is the incident delete uh, week. So I will start the attendance from next week. So please make sure you attend the class, okay? Final exam, 50%. Okay, final exam, macam biasa lah, online lah. Eh? Uh, take home exam, 50%. Uh, so, um, yeah, about final exam, uh, since we are doing online, so we found out that many students are cheating in the final exam. So, I hope you didn't do that kind of things. Okay, I hope you jujur eh, dalam final exam eh. So, we know that, uh, we know all the methods that the students did. So, I, I know that uh, since last semester, the, the pattern of the answers are the same among the students. So, it is not good actually eh. Dia memudahkan saya untuk menanda, tetapi kalau seorang salah, semua akan salah. Okay, so I hope that you do your your best for the final exam. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for this uh, uh, subject, we for the project, we will use, uh, we will do a MATLAB project. Okay, kita akan buat project MATLAB. So, uh, I hope that you can uh, download uh, the software. Okay, I hope that you can download the software from, uh, from the website. Okay, ataupun, uh, or maybe you can get from the PTM, I, I don't know. So, uh, I will show you how to download the software because uh, UTHM, we subscribe to MATLAB. Okay, we subscribe to MATLAB and therefore you should have the access to the MATLAB. Okay. Yes, okay. So if you are, if you don't know how to use MATLAB, please uh, learn from now how to use a MATLAB. Okay, because our project will be uh, will utilize the MATLAB software. Okay.
So the the main reference, uh, these are the main reference. Uh, we're gonna fully utilize the Wayne Tomasi book. Okay, kita akan gunakan buku Wayne Tomasi. So this book I have included in the author platform. Okay, but it is for the uh, first edition. Now, uh, maybe fifth edition or more, or sixth or seventh edition now. Okay. But I already give you the soft copy for the first edition, okay? And another good, uh, uh, okay. Another good uh, reference is uh, Frenzel uh, from Frenzel. Frenzel, uh, I already include also in the author platform, okay? Saya so, dah masukkan dalam buku, sorry, dalam platform author. So you can read the book and uh, for for your you can read the book for your uh, for your study, okay. And then uh, course attendance regulations. Uh, remember that a uh, student must attend not less than eighty percent. Pelajar mesti hadir uh, lebih daripada lapan puluh percent. That means you cannot absent without uh, notice without a MC, without an official letter, more than three times. Okay, so if you see 80%, 80% means you cannot absent more than three times. Okay, three times is the maximum. Okay, so if you don't, uh, if you absent, please make sure you send to me soft copy of your MC from doctor or if you, do have, you don't have the MC, maybe you have the official letter, for example. Or if you don't have the official letter, you can write your own letter to me. And your PAK needs to sign first. Okay, so if you don't have the official letter, you don't have the MC, you write a letter. Uh, and then you sign, your PAK sign, your PA, PA sign, and then you send to me. Okay, if your PAK don't sign, that means I will not receive your, I will not accept your letter. Okay, saya hanya akan uh, terima surat yang ditulis oleh pelajar yang telah ditandatangan oleh penasihat akademik. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that's all for the uh, uh, RPP document. Okay, the teaching uh, the teaching plan, okay, Le the lecture plan document, okay. And um, so for those, uh, saya nak tunjuk sikit berkenaan dengan author, okay. So I have uh, created the author, so this is from my view. So you see that uh, uh, the course info, I already include the RPP documents, uh, the lecture plan documents, if you see here from the learning material, I already include all the uh, I already include all the lecture notes from chapter one until chapter five, and also including the books. If you see the books, we have a Frenzel document. Uh, sorry, we have Frenzel, and also from the Wayne Tomasi first edition. Uh, this is another books. Okay, soft copy for you. And then I also includes all the uh, past year questions. Okay, I thought I already include the past year questions, but it's not here. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I will include the past year uh, questions over here. Okay, yes, uh, saya akan share. I will share to you the past year uh, test, uh, final exam, and also some tutorials questions. Okay, question only. Okay, so you can practice on your own uh, based on the past year questions. Okay, saya akan share nanti. Okay. And for the individual activities, I think I already, um, I think I already uh, sh shared this one yesterday. 
uh, find group members. Okay, you need to find your group members. So for the first uh, activity, for the first and second week activity, you need to find your group member. Okay, and how to find the group member? I already give you the link. Ah, ni pun dah banyak yang isi eh. Okay, so I already create the spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet. So we have a uh, fifty-one students. So I uh, make a uh, ten groups. They're gonna be ten groups maximum. Uh, ten so maximum per group five students. Only uh, no, group number one have uh, six students. Yang lain semua adalah five students. So this is uh, based on the assumption that we have only fifty-one students maximum eh, per class. If we have more, then I will. Add more rows in the table. Okay, saya akan tambah row jika jumlah studentnya bertambah. So uh, please make sure you contact your friends. Okay, don't just put your name, your email, and also your phone number here. You need to contact your friends. Otherwise, your friend don't know that you are in the group. Okay, otherwise kawan-kawan kamu tidak tahu yang kamu berada dalam group. So please make sure you contact all your friends, okay, in the group, okay. Jangan lupa. Eh. Uh, pernah berlaku sebelum ini uh, pelajar uh, lambat menulis nama di dalam list ini, and all the other group members don't know that this person is in the group, okay. At the end, so this student. Receiver zero marks for the project because this student uh, didn't contribute or didn't join all the group activities. Okay, dia tidak join group activities kerana dia tidak tahu dia uh, orang lain pun tak tahu dia join group itu eh. So please make sure you contact your friends. Okay. So so this is the first activity. Uh, the other activity is you need to download MATLAB. Semua pernah download MATLAB. Semua dah ada MATLAB belum? Ada, ada. Ada? Ya, ada. Okey, saya rasa semua dah ada. Ataupun yang belum ada, mungkin saya nak tunjuk sikit lah. Eh. So, uh, MathWorks. So, you boleh pergi kepada MathWorks. Okey. Uh, pergi ke MathWorks uh, website. Okey, pergi ke MathWorks uh, website. And then, first of all, you need to register your account. Okay, kamu perlu register account dalam uh, MathWorks uh, website. So, once you already registered, uh, please register using your student's email address. Okay, remember that UTHM subscribe to MATLAB. So, you are entitled to get the free version of the MATLAB. You tak perlu bayar pun eh. Sebab university telah bayar untuk kamu eh. So once you uh, create your account, so and then you log in. For example, me, Lukman Auda. So I already have my own account. So you're gonna see that there's a button here, Get MATLAB. Okay. Apabila kamu telah log in, tadi kamu telah create account, and then you log in. So now you are logging in the website. So there's a button here, Get MATLAB. So if you press this button, Get MATLAB. Okay, you're going to see that uh, there are three options. Either you want to use a campus-wide access, a MATLAB online or by now. So my suggestion, you can uh, click this one, eh? get MATLAB access now for the campus-wide access. Uh, so you can download from here for free. Okay, tak perlu bayar. Okay, dengan menggunakan email address student UTHM. Okay, so after you download, you need to install and I suggest you get used with the MATLAB. And, uh, okay, so um, the project uh, is something that you have learned in the numerical programming subject. It is about creating a GUI for the simulations. Of the, for example, uh, modulation simulations uh, for the project. Nanti akan diterangkan. Eh? So for the project, I will explain uh, next week. 
but uh, what I've been told that uh, the project is about uh, simulation using MATLAB. You need to create some uh, GUIs and then you need to make it uh, make the simulation, run the simulations through the MATLAB. And then you're going to get some graphs and then you need to explain uh, about the simulation and so on. Okay, so you can be a second menggunakan MATLAB. Okay. So, uh, okay, so do you have any questions you want to ask about a project, uh, about, uh, for example, Assessment, for example, for the test or whatever. Kalau ada soalan nak tanya. Okay, especially this one. Eh? Uh, test would be conducted uh, before the mid-semester break. Quiz, we're going to have uh, two quizzes. One before the mid-semester break and one after the mid-semester break. Uh, for the project, we have... Um, uh, we have a few assessments. Okay, ada beberapa assessment. Assessment yang pertama pada minggu yang keempat atau lima, week four or week five, is you need to create a video presentation for the proposal. And then we have the progress report one, progress report two, and then uh, we have the final report, and then the final demo, final demonstration. So the final demonstration would be on, sorry, would be in week 13 or week 14. So the project assessment, uh, there are a few assessment, bukan hanya satu and not just one, there are a few assessments, okay? So I think maybe uh, in details, I will explain more details about the project next week. But for now, please make sure you have your group members and you already have the MATLAB software. Okay. Boleh ya? Eh? Ada soalan nak tanya tak? Oh. Ya. Yeah. Ada, ada. Ya, yeah, sila. Okay. Assalamualaikum and good morning, doctor. Ya. Yeah. I Salam. want to know about the test, the date for test. Uh, sorry, I haven't decided yet. Sorry. I will inform you later about the date. Oh. So, normally the date... um. Uh, in the previous uh, semester, we did the test in week 6. Okay, week 6, uh, normally we did, uh, in the previous semester, we did in, uh, sorry, on Thursday, week 6. Okay, pada hari Kamis, uh, minggu ke-6, malam eh, biasanya. But for this semester, we haven't decided yet. Okay, so normally, uh, we will do the test at night supaya tidak mengganggu kelas-kelas yang lain. Okay? Uh, ada soalan lain? Um, doktor, yeah. I also me, I have another question about yeah, yeah. where we get the MATLAB question. MATLAB? Yeah, for Mat project or assessment. MATLAB, MATLAB question. apa? Mat, uh, where, sorry, where we get the MATLAB equation? I mean, it's for exercise or what? Yeah. MATLAB equation. Question and equation, yeah. Uh, MATLAB equation, I don't understand. Uh, MATLAB equation, you mean the uh, codes? I mean, yeah, for the codes, uh, which is the project doesn't give, right? For the... Yeah. For... What we call? I think you need to do. Uh, I think that one you need to do <laughs> on your own. <laughs> you need to do on your own. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I mean the, the code. Uh, the code our you, own time, right? Yeah, you need to write on your own. But actually, the 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 codes. Uh, some of the codes are maybe available in the website. So I'm not. Uh, saya tidak melarang. Eh? I'm not. Uh, I'm not restrict you to to use the codes from the online. You need to know how to use it. Okay, I think that the, the codes are available online. Some of the codes are available online. So that means you need to do some uh, some coding as well. Okay, bukan hanya kamu kena dapatkan daripada luar. Eh? But you need also to do on your own. Okay, so you can, you can see the example from the website. 
I believe there are a lot of coding in the website. You can, you can see how they do the coding and then you can modify the coding for your project. So, in my opinion, you are not going to do it from the scratch. Kamu tidak akan buat daripada scratch. You will, uh, you can get some from the internet as well. And I believe that you also have learned uh, how to do it uh, from the previous subject, for example, numerical programming. Okay, saya rasa kamu pun telah uh, belajar macam mana cara nak buat beberapa function di dalam MATLAB uh, daripada kursus yang telah diambil sebelum ini iaitu numerical programming. Okay, adakah saya menjawab soalan? Ah, uh, Ya, ya, menjawab. Okay. Uh, sorry for... Uh, doktor, yeah. uh, ni yang untuk test tu, yeah. uh, cover chapter berapa ya? I mean, okay, for test, test uh, normally cover uh, from chapter 1, chapter 2 and some chapter 3, some topics in chapter 3. So, chapter 1, chapter 2 and some topics in chapter 3. So, normally we have three questions for the test. Biasanya ada tiga uh, soalan. So, the, the marks normally about uh, 60 marks. Uh, uh, which will contribute to 15% of the coursework uh, percent. Eh? So, uh, chapter 1, 20%, chapter 2, 20%, sorry, chapter 1, 20 marks, cha chapter 2, 20 marks, chapter 3, 20 marks. So, we have uh, 60 marks in total, which contribute to 15%. Okay, so uh, chapter 3 normally up to AM amplitude modulation uh, normally up to the power calculation for the AM. Ha, nanti saya akan tunjuklah. Okay. Biasanya sehingga power calculation dalam topik amplitude modulation in chapter 3. Um, also, another one question again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, for quiz, uh, we will cover chap on chapter Quiz, uh, uh, okay, quiz, uh, uh, I think a quiz for chapter one and two, quiz one, if I'm not mistaken, quiz one is uh, chapter one and two, and then quiz, uh, the second quiz covers for the chapter four, uh, which is after you, you, you will do the uh, the second quiz after the mid sem break. So that one may be, uh, the topics would be chapter 4. Uh, so the question normally we have uh, 10, or maybe 10 or 20 objectives question only. Very simple. Okay. So if you have two quizzes, that means uh, each quiz, the marks going to be 2.5%. 2.5 and 2.5. So the total will be 5%. Okay. So quiz normally we do uh, using Google form. Uh, objective questions dan sangat mudah okey boleh eh um, uh, boleh doktor doktor ada yeah. problem about my friend dia try download guna <coughs> sorry my friend dia try download guna um, email siswa tak boleh buka uh, tak boleh untuk uh, mana matlab ni ya yeah. Okay, if let's say you cannot download, uh, you you have problem. Let's say you have problem uh, downloading software from here. Uh, first of all, you, you need to create your uh, account. Okay, first of all, you need to create account using your uh, Siswa email. Okay, and then you download and then you install. So if you have problems to do that, you can contact PTM, okay, contact PTM to get the software. So PTM know how to, uh, to uh, PTM will guide you how to install the MATLAB software. Boleh eh? So, uh, so uh, because I have tried this one, so it, it should have no problem. Okay, sepatutnya tidak ada masalah. Kerana benda ni telah, uh, telah di, pernah dibuat eh. So, biasanya kalau you dah, dah download, you dah install, you dah activate your license, uh, student license, so you can use the MATLAB. Okay? 
So maybe you need to read the manual first and then you try to install. If let's say you cannot install, you need to contact PTM as soon as possible. Okay, PTM will guide you how to install this. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, boleh doktor. Final exam will cover on chapter 4 and 5, right? No. Chapter no. 1 until 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, 5. All chapter? Yeah. Alright, okay. Okay, so... So I will explain about um, okay about this about this subject. Saya akan terangkan tentang subject ini. So actually, what you, what you will learn in this subject, okay? So okay. so maybe I write here P E J. So now it's uh, week one. Week one, um, twenty second of March. Okay. So. Okay. So maybe I will. Uh, I will show you something. Okay. So you see that. Uh, in this subject, actually what you will learn, only a few, uh, just the thing that you learn in this subject is not, is not too much actually. Eh? It's uh, the fundamental of communication system. Uh, you will learn about the transmitter. Okay, so we have the transmitter here. Okay, so we have the input from here. Okay. And then uh, we also, you also will learn about the receiver. Okay, receiver. And this is the out. And remember that in the middle here is the medium, or we also call it as channel. Okay, so channel or medium. So the channel can be either wireless, okay, wireless medium, or it is a wired medium, okay. It can be wired, which connected from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, dia boleh juga jadi wired, eh? Okay, it can be wired that connected to the receiver. Okay, dia boleh juga jadi wired. Saya ustaz ke sini. Okay. So, uh, if you see that only this, eh, you, you will learn only about this throughout the semester. Okay, so I will, uh, I will show you that. Okay, in chapter 1, you will learn the basic uh, uh, the basic knowledge of the communication system. You will learn about the uh, transmitter, the basic concept of transmitter, the basic concept of receiver, and uh, the basic concept of channel or the medium. So basically, you will learn in general about... Uh, sorry. Okay, so you will learn the basic concept of uh, chap sorry. Okay, so you will learn about chap. So here, sorry. Okay, sorry, saya punya ni ada masalah sikit. Sikit. So in chapter 1, you will learn 
all okay transmitter receiver and channel uh, the basic concept of transmitter the basic concept of receiver and also the basic concept of the channel so you will learn in chapter 1 okay in chapter 2 you will learn about the uh, the noise okay chapter 2 you will learn about the noise in the system and also outside from the system okay so you will learn about the noise in the system which is in the receiver in the transmitter and also in the receiver and then uh, the noise in the channel so this is chapter 2 okay Okay, so, okay, remember chapter 2, we go inside the system and also the noise in the uh, in the channel. Okay, chapter 2 is about noise. Eh? Noise, uh, we can say padam sikit lagi. Eh? So, tadi in uh, chapter 1 is intro. Okay, uh, chapter 2, noise. This one we have noise. This one we have noise. So you will learn in chapter 2. Eh? You will learn in chapter 2. CH2. Okay. So you will learn about the internal noise, external noise. But you will learn more about the, uh, what they call the, uh, temp uh, the, sorry, the, the thermal noise. They call it the thermal noise. Noise yang, ber yang berkaitan dengan temperature. Okay. And then, we go to chapter 3. Chapter 3, you will learn about modulation technique. Okay. Chapter 3, you will learn about modulation technique. So, uh, later you're going to see that uh, uh, in chapter 3, uh, you will learn about modulations. Okay, so I bought that sini lah. You will learn about modulation, analog modulation, and also you will learn about digital modulation in the receiver. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, uh, chapter 3 is about analog modulation. Okay, and here is demodulation. Okay, so this one is in uh, chapter 3. Okay. Okay, chapter 3. So we have the what they call the AM, uh, FM, uh, we have the PM. So here also uh, demodulation technique for the AM, uh, FM, and also the phase modulation PM. Okay. So uh, in chapter three, first you will learn about AM modulation technique, demodulation technique. The second part of chapter three, you will learn about angle modulation, which consists of frequency modulation FM and also the phase modulation okay and then the demodulation process so you will look uh, you will look inside the system of transmitter and then you're going to look inside the system of receiver okay so this one for chapter 3 is about analog system and then in chapter 4 you will learn about digital modulation and demodulation technique okay so in chapter 4 Okay, chapter 4, also you will learn about transmitter. So we repeat again inside the transmitter. Okay, chapter 4. Chapter 4, but in, uh, you will learn about digitizations, how to convert into digital uh, signal uh, in the digital system. Eh? So in chapter 4, you will learn about digital system. Uh, so in chapter 4, also you will learn about the digital modulation technique which consists of uh, ASK, FSK and also the PSK. 
Also in chapter 4, you will learn about the... Um, uh, chapter 4, you will also learn about uh, digital demodulation techniques as well. Okay? So in chapter 4, we have, uh, for the modulation techniques, we have ASK, we have the FSK, and also the PSK. ASK is the uh, amplitude shift king, FSK is the frequency shift king, and also the uh, PSK is the phase shift king. Okay, here also we have uh, demodulation techniques for the uh, ASK, uh, FSK, frequency shift king, and also the phase shift king, PSK. Okay, very basic about uh, these modulation techniques. Okay, and then we go to chapter 5, the last chapter. So the last chapter, we gonna uh, learn something uh, from outside the system. Okay, so I will use a different color. Uh, for example, uh, a green color, for example. Eh? So chapter 5 consists of five topics. The first topic is about the transmission line. So you will learn about channel, wireless channel, and also the wired channel. Okay, the wired channel. Okay, so... This one is the first part of chapter 5, which is the transmission line. So, transmission line can be wired or the wireless. Okay, macam mana kalau ada wireless medium, macam mana kalau you ada wired medium. So, the first part of chapter 5 is all about the medium. Okay, and then the second part of chapter 5, you will learn about antenna. Ini eh. Uh, so, you will learn about the transmitter antenna and the receiving antenna. Uh, so, this is also the general concept of antenna. And then, the third, top, the third subtopic in Chapter 5 is about wave propagations. Okay, wave propagations. You will learn uh, the fundamental concept of wave propagations. Okay, the characteristic of wave. The wave that travels from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, the electromagnetic wave. Okay, so you see that we have a one, uh, and then we have two, and then we have three topics. Okay, ada tiga topics eh, yaitu uh, transmission line, antenna, and also the uh, wave propagation. Okay, wave propagation, you will learn about the characteristic of the waves. Sifat-sifat, gelombang, electromagnet. Itu adalah subtopic yang ketiga. So, this one is includes in uh, chapter 5. Okay, chapter 5, you will learn something outside from the transmitter and the receiver system. Di luar daripada transmitter and receiver system. Okay. So, for your information, I will always show you this picture. Saya akan sentiasa tunjukkan gambar raja ini uh, supaya ianya sentiasa berulang sehingga chapter 5. Okay, so I always uh, told my students that this picture is my favorite picture. Okay, because uh, you're going to see later that I al always draw this kind of picture, eh? transmitter, receiver, channel. Uh, and then I will show the students, so where are we now? We are in the transmitter. Where are we now? We are in the channel or maybe in the receiver. Okay. So, ini sahaja yang kamu akan pelajari sepanjang semester ini. Uh, sikit ya. Eh? Uh, dia sebenarnya, uh, for your information, uh, ECS is, is an easy subject, but you need to read a lot of uh, uh, fundamentals concept. You need to understand the basic concept, the fundamental concept, and you need to be able to explain the concept. Okay? In terms of calculation, the calculation is not difficult. Very easy. Okay? Uh, the most difficult uh, 
mathematical calculation gonna be integration. Only single integration may be sine or cos. Okay, sine uh, theta t uh, dt. Eh? So this, uh, I think this is the most difficult in ECS. So if you think this is easy, uh, so this subject gonna be very easy for you. Okay, so subjek ini tidak banyak menggunakan calculations. Adalah, ada ada banyak calculation tetapi uh, it's not too complex. Okay, it's not too complex. Tidak terlalu complex dan tidak sukar. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think I will start with chapter 1. Okay, saya akan uh, proceed dengan chapter 1. Okay, so pelajar-pelajar uh, students, if you want to take a break for a while, you can take a break. No problem. Uh, but for me, I will continue with the first chapter. Okay. The first chapter. Okay, saya akan proceed dengan chapter yang pertama. So, so ini eh. Okay. Okay, the first chapter introduction to the communication system. As I mentioned earlier, communication system we have the transmitter, receiver and also the channel, the medium. Okay? And topics covered in chapter 1, uh, intro, introduction, uh, the some terminologies and then the electromagnetic spectrum. So this here you learn about the uh, the wave, a little bit about the wave, and then the bandwidth calculations, uh, type of electronic communication systems, modulation and multiplexing, decibel and power. So if you ask me um, for the test and final exam, um, chapter one, we ask, normally we ask about number seven, how to calculate the decibel and power and some of the uh, some of the here very basic concept eh? kita akan tanya sedikit eh? but uh, we we like to ask, we like to ask questions about this one eh? how to calculate uh, decibel and power okay yang lain ni cuma uh, small small questions eh sub sub questions okay okay uh, for the introductions, uh, communication system is the process of exchange information from one point to another. Okay, it requires a transmitter, the channel or the medium and also the receiver. Remember, we need to have these three components for the communication system. Okay, must be other three component in it. So during the communication process, the noise will degrade or interfere with the transmitted information. So this noise will disturb uh, the signal that being transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, dia akan mengganggu proses uh, penghantaran signal tersebut. Okay, so this is the, uh, the picture of a general block diagram for the transceiver, transmitter and receiver. So we have here is the source system okay normally we normally we combine it okay biasanya kita combine kan atau some we uh, ada setengah gambar yang dia separate kan eh? so this is uh, the transmitter will process the input from the source so the source can be uh, uh, any input either from the human input or it is from other machines uh, input to the transmitter. So the job of transmitter is to convert the input into a, a signal that is suitable for transmission. Okay, tugas transmitter ini adalah untuk menukar input kepada signal yang sesuai untuk penghantaran. Okay, for example, uh, for example is like your mobile phone, for example. Uh, so when you speak, so your phone, your mobile phone will convert your voice into the electromagnetic wave and then transmit into the channel. 
into the medium, into the wireless channel. Okay. So transmission system. So this one is, uh, we can say is the medium. It can be wired or wireless. And then we have the receiver. The receiver receive the, in, uh, receive the transmitted signal and convert into the original uh, into the original input signal okay so the the job of receiver is to convert the received signal into uh, to the suitable output uh, to, to the same input eh? so the receiver will convert the received signal uh, to the original signal okay for example if the if the input is a voice so the receiver will convert the received signal to to the voice. Okay, dia akan keluarkan dalam bentuk signal yang sama. Okay, either analog or digital. Okay, so so the destination here can be uh, human as well, or maybe another output uh, machines, for example. Okay, so for example, uh, you menggunakan mobile phones, eh? So you when you speak. The transmitter convert the signal in uh, convert your voice into a uh, electromagnetic signal, and then transmit to the medium, and then the receiver receive the uh, the transmitted signal, and then process it, and then convert it into the uh, voice so that the other person on the other side can uh, can listen and can understand what have been transferred. Uh, so itu dia punya proses, okay? So uh, and then uh, the picture below is about the uh, networking, eh? uh, public switch telephone network. Eh? For example, here is the workstation, uh, and then we have the modem. Modem is a modulation demodulation device. So this modem can do both, eh? uh, modulation technique and also the demodulation techniques. Because uh, this is a two-way communication. Eh? So remember, communication is not only one way. We have also two-way communications. Means that each of the device can be either transmitter or the receiver. Okay. So here is the public switch telephone network. So these are the medium. In this example, it used the wired medium, wired uh, link. Okay. And then modem here and then the server okay so normally for the client server communication like this so the client will request data to the server and the server will respond with the requested data so ini adalah seperti uh, not only for the telephone uh, switch networks it's all, also for the internet as well okay so ini di, juga dipanggil sebagai client server communication system yang bawah ni. Eh? Okay. And this is the block diagram of the transmitter and receiver. So we have uh, the first part is the source signal. For example, your voice for example. Okay. And then you when you once you speak and then uh, the, the transmitter will convert the input signal to a baseband signal. Okay, dia akan convert kepada baseband signal. Baseband signal is a low frequency signal which has the same frequency of your voice. Okay, it is uh, the term baseband. Okay, the term baseband is uh, any frequency from zero until So baseband is a low frequency signal starting from uh, zero until a few kilohertz. Okay, until a few kilohertz. Okay, sehingga beberapa kilohertz. So baseband is a low frequency signal, which is the same frequency as the input signal. Okay, dia adalah uh, Frekuensi yang sama ataupun hampir sama dengan input signal. In other words, it is the 
low frequency signal okay and then go to the it uh, from the baseband go to the uh, modulation and power application um, uh, block diagram so here we'll be uh, doing the modulation process modulation is the process of convert the input signal into the output signal that are suitable for transmission okay so here is the uh, band pass eh? so here normally we, we call it as a band pass signal okay so the modulation process convert low frequency into a higher frequency uh, it will convert uh, the input into the uh, output for example like the electromagnetic wave with a certain frequencies a higher frequency that are suitable for transmission so before this the uh, baseband frequency is not suitable for long distance transmission so if you want to transmit to long distance you need to do the modulation process you need to convert the baseband frequency into a higher frequency or we call it as a radio frequency that are suitable for transmission okay so baseband frequency ini dia tidak sesuai untuk penghantaran jauh dia perlu ditukar kepada frekuensi yang lebih tinggi supaya dia lebih dia boleh dihantar pada jarak yang lebih jauh okay so this is uh, normally we call it as a radio frequency eh? radio frequency and then we amplify the the power so that we can transmit a long distance okay and this subsystem synchronization uh, normally we use it for the digital system uh, synchronization means that the the transmitter and the receiver needs to be synchronized in terms of time okay so in digital system uh, both transmitter and receiver they must be uh, both transmitter and receiver must be synchronized in terms of time means that uh, the transmitter and receiver knows each other uh, when the transmitter gonna send the data and uh, what is the requirement of the receiver what is the limitation of the receiver and also the limitation of transmitter so both must know each other so it must be synchronized okay otherwise you cannot transmit the system uh, otherwise you cannot transmit the data okay so this subsystem synchronization uh, normally we use it in the digital system in analog system normally we don't have the synchronization okay dalam analog tidak ada uh, synchronization seperti ini and then uh, transmission in terms of electrical field uh, electrical field uh, we can transmit as a wireless or wired okay electric field ni dia boleh jadi wireless ataupun dalam wired medium boleh eh? and then uh, go to the receiver so once the receiver receive the signal the signal is um, okay from the transmitter to the receiver okay from the transmitter to the receiver so the signal already uh, go to a long distance transmission what happened is that the signal gonna be attenuates signal akan melemah kerana perjalanan yang jauh itu eh so we call it as attenuations so the signal attenuates as it travels from the transmitter to the receiver so the receiver receiver signal that are weak okay the receivers receive the signal that is already weak because of the attenuations okay attenuation is normally due to the distance okay signal akan melemah so attenuation is part of the uh, part of the uh, part of the thing that degrades the quality of the signal not only the attenuation you also will learn later about the noise noise also will uh, disturb the transmitted signal okay so for example we 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 assume only the attenuations katalah kita assume cuma attenuation sahaja okay uh, you see that the signal that received by the receiver is already weak so it needs to be amplified so that we can process the input signal because signal ini terlalu lemah signal yang diterima ini terlalu lemah dia perlu di amplify terlebih dahulu barulah proses seterusnya dapat dilaksanakan 
Okay, so we do the amplification first and then we do the demodulation process. Demodulation is the reverse process of modulation, okay, which we convert the electromagnetic signal into the baseband signal, into the original signal. So demodulation process, we want to convert into the original signal. Okay, we convert the, uh, the received signals to the original signal, which is a baseband signal. Okay, and then baseband inverter goes to the baseband inverter. So this is, again, inverter. This one is used in the digital system uh, to convert, uh, for example, uh, unipolar to bipolar or bipolar to unipolar. And then we process... Uh, uh, baseband processing, either you want to amplify the signal or, or do something else, okay, or do something else, and then uh, the output here received by the uh, received by the uh, for example, human, for example, or other machines as well over here. Okay. Again, the synchronizations here, uh, this one link. Okay, this synchronization link to this synchronizations. Okay, so both transmitter and receiver are synchronized, especially in terms of time. Okay, they are synchronized dari segi masa. So, apabila synchronized dari segi masa, uh, maknanya uh, transmitter dan receiver, uh, kedua-dua elemen ini tahu bila masa untuk hantar dan juga terima. Okay, it needs to be synchronized in terms of time. Okay. Uh, some terminology like um, uh, electronic communication, uh, you see the electronic communication system consists of uh, transmission, reception, processing of information between two or more location using the electric electronic circuit. What is the information? Information is the, uh, is the, commodity produced by the source for transfer to some user at the destination. Okay. And then the message is the physical manifestation of the information as produced by the information source. So, for example, when you speak, okay, when you speak, you have, you, uh, you speak something that consists of information. Okay. That voice, uh, is what we call as a message. You give the message. Okay, when you speak, you provide the message to the transmitter. Inside the message consists of information. Okay, so when the transmitter receives the message, it will convert into signals. Okay, apabila dia terima voice message, dia akan tukar kepada signals. So signals is the term that we use uh, that convert the message into a suitable uh, wave, into a suitable signal for transmission. So in this case, the transmitter received this uh, voice, for example, and then convert into the electromagnetic wave. So remember, electromagnetic wave consists of voltage or current signal. Okay, so they took kepada electromagnetic wave, which consists of voltage and current. Uh, so these are the terminology, the main terminology. Uh, types of signals. I believe you already know about this. So we have two types of signal. We have an analog and we have the digital signals. The first one is the analog signal. So remember analog signal is continuous over time and it has infinite shape. Okay. Uh, signal analog ini adalah continuous terhadap masa dan dia mempunyai uh, bentuk yang pelbagai, infinite shape. Okay, for example like uh, for example like uh, sound, video. Uh, so this is the example. So you see that it is continuous over time. Dia berterusan terhadap masa. Okay, whereas for the digital signal. Digital signal is, we can say that it is uh, discrete over time and it has only uh, two, uh, it has only two uh, levels, okay, it has only two shapes, eh? either logic zero or logic one. Hanya ada uh, 
uh, there are only two probabilities only either logic one or logic zero okay so you see that here for example logic one logic sorry logic zero logic one logic zero logic one 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 and so on so there are only two possibilities either logic one or logic Zero. It is not number. Eh? Dia bukan nombor kosong, nombor satu. Eh? It is a logic number. Okay. Where these logic numbers are convert into the amplitudes, uh, which is the voltage or the current. Uh, so remember that uh, digital signal. It is not continuous over time. It is discrete over time, whereas it only has two possibilities either input either logic one or logic zero okay so if you see here uh, uh, digital signal has a few disadvantages okay you see that digital signal uh, we can treat all digital signal equally where because uh, because all digital signal it has only two possibilities either logic one or logic zero therefore we can uh, easily process the signal compared to the analog if you see the analog we have uh, infinite shape dia punya bentuk itu pelbagai yang mana dia menyukarkan proses untuk uh, signal processing eh. the signal processing gonna be uh, a little uh, more harder compared to the when you process the digital signal okay you're gonna see later that there are a few advantages when we use the digital signal where we can transmit at longer distance okay so now normally now we use a uh, now in the modern communication system we use the digital signal okay transmitter and receiver uh, transmitter is the collection of one or more electronic device, devices or circuits that converts original source into, uh, let, uh, into signal that is more suitable for transmission into the medium. Other functions perform like amplification, filtering, radiations, antenna. So message convert into electrical signal by the uh, transducer is part of the transmitter. Okay, and then the receiver is a collection of electronic device uh, and circuits that accept the transmitted signal from transmission medium, convert back into the original form. Okay, for example, mixing, demodulation, decoding, and so on. So, tadi saya lukis only satu block diagram eh, dalam saya punya gambar raja tadi. So, it is actually consists of many electronic devices, many circuits inside the transmitter and receiver. Okay, some of the function that will be done in the receiver also uh, same like, almost the same like the transmitter, lebih kurang macam transmitter juga, yang mana dia ada process amplifications, filtering, uh, and other processes involved. Also have transducer convert electrical signal at its input to a form desired by the signal system used. Okay. So there are beberapa uh, process. Eh? There are a few processes involved inside the transmitter and the receiver. Okay. Modulation. Uh, what is the modulation? So modulation is a process of changing one or more properties of the analog carrier in proportion to the information signal okay so if i draw the block diagram of modulator okay for example this is the block diagram of modulator so we have the input signal over here okay for example input here for example maybe your voice for example okay and then we have another input here which is the carrier signal. Remember that modulation process involves at least two input. Okay, modulation hanya boleh berlaku dengan adanya sekurang-kurangnya dua input. 
you can have more inputs eh? you can you can have more than two inputs but at least two input in order to do the modulation process so during this modulation process the carrier signal the property of the carrier signal will change in accordance with the input signal okay so for example you have the sine wave for the input and also you have the sine wave for the uh, carrier signal you're gonna see later that the output okay the characteristic of the carrier change in accordance to the uh, carrier in accordance to the input signal okay for example the output gonna be something like this okay you see that uh, the shape the characteristic of the carrier change in accordance with the input signal okay so modulation process involve uh, changing one at least one property of the carrier in accordance with the input variations so process modulation ini melibatkan perubahan sifat carrier berkadaran dengan perubahan input signal Okay, so uh, modulation process um, akan mengubah sifat carrier berkadaran dengan perubahan input signal. Okay, so that's the the fundamental of modulation. So you see that um, one or more property of the carrier will change. Okay, apakah property of the carrier yang terlibat? Ada tiga yang kamu akan pelajari. Yaitu, the first one is the amplitude. Okay. The second one is frequency. So, these are the property. Property of the carrier. Sifat-sifat carrier yang akan berubah. Ada tiga yang kamu akan pelajari. There are three properties of the carrier that change during the modulation process. Uh, so, the properties involved are amplitude frequency and also the phase fasa uh, okay so if the amplitude of the carrier change in accordance with the input signal so we call it as am amplitude modulation okay if the frequency of the carrier change in accordance with the input signal we call it as fm frequency modulation if the phase of the carrier change in accordance with the input signal, it is called as uh, PM, phase modulation. Uh, so, other tiga characteristic. There are three characteristics that you will learn in chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay, dalam chapter 4, you will learn about ASK. So, ASK is uh, uh, what we can say is equivalence ataupun setara dengan AM. Okay, ASK, amplitude shift king, setara dengan AM. It is equivalent with the AM in analog. FSK in digital is equivalent with the FM in analog. While the PSK in digital is equivalent to the PM in analog. So, dia macam, uh, dia setara eh, dengan uh, ketiga-tiga ini eh setara dengan yang ini eh dalam analog. So this always been asked in the test and also the final exam. Okay, apakah uh, define the term of modulation? Apakah itu modulation? Uh, so explain about modulation process. Remember class, uh, this also the question that have been asked to me during my job interview previously. Okay, so previously, a um, long time ago, when I go to when I went to the uh, job interview in a company, in a big company, so one engineer asked me about modulation. So he asked me, uh, "What do you know about modulation?" Okay, he only asked me about these questions because he want me to know 
uh, about my understanding about the modulation process. So uh, these are the fundamental, very basic. So you need to know not only in these subjects, but also for your uh, future jobs, actually. Eh? You will see these kind of things uh, many times later. Okay, And then a uh, mixing. So you see that mixing also like modulation where it involves uh, at least two inputs. Okay, mixing also needs at least two inputs. It is more, um, so when mixing, it only combine two or more signals without changing the properties of the signal. Okay, remember that mixing doesn't change, okay, mixing does not change the property of the signal. Okay, berbeza dengan modulation. Different from the modulation, uh, mixing only combine without changing the property of the signals. Okay, filtering means that we want to remove the unwanted signal. Okay, when we do the filtering process, we want to remove the unwanted signal. Okay, there's a filtering process. Norm normally, we filter out the, the noise. Okay, we want to filter out the noise. Uh, that's the, the basic uh, filtering process. We want to remove the noise or maybe some other interference okay, signal from other uh, sources. Kita nak remove uh, interference daripada signal yang lain, eh, yang kita tidak inginkan. Okay. Baseband converter converts signal source into a baseband waveform for the carry signal before transmission. Okay, so it converts, for example, the input uh, like voice into a baseband signal before the process of modulation. Okay, so it can be analog or digital system. Subsystem synchronizations uh, synchronized between transmitter and receiver for the recovery process. Uh, transmission mediums, so we have a wired or wireless. Okay, wired, we can ha we have many types of wired, uh, for example, copper wire uh, or optical fiber cable. And free space, uh, normally we use an electromagnetic wave to transmit the signal into the space, okay, into the free space. Udara, eh? free space adalah udara. And these are the electromagnetic spectrum or electromagnetic wave. Uh, this picture is electromagnetic wave. So if you see this here, the electromagnetic wave, we have a, a electric field and also the magnetic field. Okay, remember electromagnetic signal consists of electric field and also the magnetic field. The red color is the uh, red color is the electric field, E field where the blue color is the magnetic field okay so you see that both elect uh, electric and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other okay if you see that uh, the electric field is in these directions okay e field is up directions and uh, the magnetic field is uh, 90 degrees okay so the magnetic field is 90 degrees from the E field and both of these move into the other directions. Okay, movement. Okay, movement. Move into other directions. So this is the, the basic concept of electromagnetic field. And I believe you have learned some of these in the EMT subject. Okay, so E field and also the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Dia adalah setentang antara satu sama lain. And it move into the another, into a different directions. Okay, into here. So, kalau kamu lihat, dia bergerak ke arah sini. Eh. Okay. So, frequency range uh, from 200 kilohertz until a few gigahertz. Uh, fundamental concept about frequency. Uh, fre frequency is the number of times a periodic motion occurs in a given period of time. It is measured in hertz or cycle per second. Okay, so berapa kitaran lengkap dalam masa 
uh, satu saat. Okay. How many cycles, how many completed cycle per second? Okay. So, you see that, uh, for example, like sine wave. Okay, sine wave, uh, satu kitaran lengkap. Ini eh, masa untuk satu kitaran lengkap adalah uh, T, for example. Okay. This is time. Uh, this is, for example, the voltage. So, the time taken for one complete cycle. In order to find the frequency, we can do it F equal to 1 over T. T is a period of time uh, in order to complete one complete cycle. Okay. So, for one complete cycle, how much is the time? And then, in order to get the frequency, you can do the uh, division 1 over T. T is a time for one repetition. Cycle is one complete alternation of the of the waveform. Okay, ini adalah cycle. Ni kira satu cycle. So, kalau untuk second cycle, dia akan proceed eh. Second cycle. Okay. Wavelength adalah panjang gelombang uh, which uh, defined as the distance traveled by the electromagnetic wave during one period of time. Okay, for one complete cycle, how far does the wave travel? Berapa jauh gelombang ini telah pergi untuk satu kitaran lengkap? So, the, the wavelength is measured in term of meter. Okay, untuk satu kitaran lengkap, berapakah jarak yang telah dilalui oleh gelombang ini? How far does the wave has traveled in one complete cycle? Okay, so the lambda is measured in term of meter. Okay, so lambda, it is equal to CT. Okay, or you can say that lambda F equal to C. So lambda is equal to C, speed of light, kelajuan cahaya dibahagikan dengan frequency. Frequency what frequency is this? This is the frequency of the wave. Ini adalah frequency gelombang. Eh? So, this frequency is this one. Eh? The frequency. So, when you want to measure in terms of lambda, you want to find the wavelength, for example, in free space, eh? dalam, uh, dalam udara. So, we divide the speed of light with the frequency of the wave. So, you're going to get this one in term of meter, dalam unit meter. Okay. So, in theoretical concept, when uh, uh, the speed of light, sorry, the, the speed of the wave uh, in free space or in the air, in the air, is less, a bit less than the speed of light. Okay. Kelajuan gelombang dalam udara sedikit kurang daripada kelajuan gelombang dalam eh uh, kurang daripada kelajuan cahaya but in the uh, in the outer space eh, uh, outside of the earth okay so the the wave travel at the speed of light okay di di uh, di uh, luar bumi eh di apa di uh, bahagian space uh, angkasa Gelombang dikatakan travel at the speed of light. But inside the earth, in the air, okay, pada udara, if the, if the medium is the air, the speed of the wave is less than the speed of light. Okay. Uh, later, we're going to see about that in chapter 4, about a uh, different kind of uh, medium. Okay, apabila medium itu bertukar daripada udara kepada bukan udara, you're going to see what is the effect of the speed of light. Eh, sorry, what is the effect of the speed of the wave? The speed of the wave change according to the type of medium. Okay, untuk jenis medium yang berbeza, uh, kelajuan gelombang itu akan menjadi beza. Okay, but remember that uh, you will use this equation throughout the uh, chapters eh, dalam uh, syllabus. Eh. Okay, so, okay, before that, eh, so you see that uh, lambda, uh, 
the relationship between lambda and the frequency of the wave. The higher the frequency of the uh, wave, the lower, the smaller or the shorter would be the wavelength. Lagi tinggi frequency, lagi pendek panjang gelombang. If the frequency is lower, the longer would be the wavelength. Terbalik, eh? Okay, so ini just a basic concept, eh? Mathematics, eh? If the, de if the denominator is higher, that means the, uh, the variable here would be smaller. If the denominator is high, uh, lower, that means the variable here going to be higher. Okay, so what is the, what is the effect you're going to see from here? Okay, so these are the type of frequencies versus uh, the lambda. So you see that um, oh, the plaza is eh? I think we have uh, students that okay already admit. Okay, so I continue again. So you sambung balik eh? Jep. Okay, so uh, you see that. Um, the frequency change as the frequency goes higher okay apabila frequency semakin besar so ELF is the extremely low frequency voice frequency very low frequency low frequency medium frequency high frequency very high frequency ultra high frequency super super high frequency extremely high frequency so you see that the range of frequencies uh, higher when we go down okay and you see that uh, the wavelength becomes shorter as we move downwards okay if we move to higher frequency the wavelength would be much much smaller okay so kalau you gunakan frequency tinggi gelombang itu cuma dapat pergi pada jarak yang dekat untuk satu kitaran lengkap. Okay, for one complete cycle, if you use a high frequency, the wavelength can only travel at shorter distance for one complete cycle. Okay, untuk satu kitaran lengkap, dia punya jarak cuma dekat sahaja. Okay. It doesn't mean we, you cannot transmit at longer distance. Eh? Kamu boleh hantar pada jarak yang jauh, uh, tetapi... Uh, apa yang saya maksudkan adalah untuk satu kitaran lengkap. Okay, for one complete cycle, the distance of the wave travel is short. Okay, the wave travel at short distance for one complete cycle if we use the high frequencies. Okay, so these are the uh, graphs to explain about uh, the relationship between the frequencies and also the wavelength and also uh, the applications eh, of the wave for example uh, ELF, VF and also VLF we use in the telephone system uh, so these are including in the twisted pair using the twisted pair cable and then uh, medium frequency until VHF uh, these are normally what we call as the radio frequencies okay and here also involve, uh, we can use the coaxial cable. So coaxial cable involve uh, these kind of frequencies. And for the wireless radio, AM berada pada, AM is under the medium wave, okay, medium frequency. And then uh, FM radio, VHF, uh, under the category of VHF, very high frequency, okay. And then as we move, to higher frequency, for example, from ultra high to extremely high. So these are under the category of uh, microwave uh, frequencies. Okay. And these microwave frequencies are used in the terrestrial and also satellite transmission. Okay. And above that one is for the infrared, uh, for example, like laser and also for the visible light. So these are the waves that use in the optical fiber. Uh, so for example, visible light, visible light is the, the wave that you can see with your eyes. Okay, you can see the, the wave with your eyes. 
So that one is under the category of visible light. Okay. So for uh, for this subject, we normally focus on uh, radio wave. Eh? Kita biasanya uh, kita banyak belajar. We we learn a lot about radio wave. Eh? We learn a lot about radio wave. Okay. And these are the analogies used about uh, the wave. Eh? Uh, ini adalah beberapa analogi yang digunakan. Eh? Kalau you tengok, uh, if you see here, we have the wavelength, we have the frequencies. Okay, and also these are the energies of the electrons. So, if, as we move to the right side, okay, as we move to the right side, sorry, here, uh, if you see, eh, it, as the frequency goes higher, okay, as the frequency goes higher, the wavelength going to be shorter. Okay. Uh, semakin tinggi frekuensi, semakin pendek panjang gelombang itu. Eh. For example, at lower frequency, AM, uh, at radio frequencies, uh, the the size of the wavelength, okay, wavelength, almost like uh, the length of the soccer field or the length of the house, for example. And then as we move to the higher frequency, okay, for example, microwave, uh, uh, microwave signals, you see that the, the wavelength are shorter, the size of baseball, for example, the size of a dot like this, very small. And as we move to higher frequency, so the, the, the wavelength will be much, much shorter until a water molecule size and maybe shorter than that. Okay. So, it depends on the application types. Okay. It depends uh, the, the frequency is chosen based on the application that we want to use. Okay. Frequency ini dipilih berdasarkan aplikasi yang kita inginkan. Okay. So, setiap application, every application has different kind of frequencies. Okay. Even uh, for your mobile uh, mobile phone, eh, use a GSM or a 4G LTE uh, frequency bands, which is different from the radio frequency band. Okay, they are based dari segi frequency. Okay, so these are the analogies uh, that I already explained. Uh, MF, medium frequency, high frequency, uh, ni pun telah saya jelaskan. Eh? Uh, SHF is a super high frequency, EHF is the extremely high frequency. And then we have the infrared, and then the visible light. Okay. So, uh, if you have questions, you can ask me, no problem. Okay, you uh, don't wait until the end of the class. If you have question to ask, please ask as soon as possible. Okay, so if you don't ask question, I will proceed to the next topics. Saya akan teruskan kepada topik yang seterusnya, which is the bandwidth. So bandwidth is the range of frequencies. Okay, it is a portion of electromagnetic spectrum occupied by the Signal. Okay, it is a portion of the uh, frequency spectrum occupied by the which is used by the signal. Okay, occupied here means used by the signal. The frequency range which a receiver or other electric circuit uh, operates. So difference uh, between upper and lower limit limits of the signal or equipment. So, uh, channel bandwidth is a range of frequencies required to transmit the desired information. Uh, so, what is the difference? So, this is just a, what is the bandwidth? Okay, even the channel, the medium, has a certain bandwidth of frequencies that it can accept. Okay, for example, an uh, audio signal being modulated by 1000 kilohertz carrier signal using AM modulation. So, uh, uh, what is bandwidth actually? Bandwidth is 
the range of frequency from lower frequency to the higher frequency. So these range of frequencies are the uh, are used by the signal that we transmit uh, from transmitter to the receiver. Okay, so the the signal that travels from transmitter to the receiver occupied or used a certain range of frequencies. Okay, dia tidak hanya satu frekuensi single. It's not only a single frequency. It is actually used a few set of frequencies. Uh, so this one is what, uh, so this one produces a bandwidth, what we call as a, uh, 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 yeah, bandwidth. Eh? So bandwidth is the range of frequencies. So how to calculate the bandwidth? You need to uh, subtract the highest frequency to the lowest frequency in the band. Okay, dalam satu band itu, you kena tolak frekuensi yang tertinggi dengan frekuensi yang terendah. You subtract the highest frequency to the lower, to the lowest frequency. For example, here, we have this, uh, so you see that here, these are the frequency range used for a certain applications from 300, from 300 hertz to 3000 hertz. So how to calculate the bandwidth? The bandwidth, we subtract the highest frequency to the lowest frequency. Remember, the unit for bandwidth is in term of hertz. Okay. So when we calculate the bandwidth, we subtract the highest to the lowest. So 3000, in this example, okay, in this example, the bandwidth is 3000 hertz minus 300 hertz. So the bandwidth is 2,000, 2,700 hertz. Okay, 2,700 hertz is the range of frequencies from the lowest to the highest frequency, to the highest frequency used for the transmission. Uh, so, ini menunjukkan bandwidth yang digunakan dalam uh, transmission antara transmitter dan juga receiver. Okay. Seterusnya, transmission medium. Uh, so this is the transmission medium, or we can say about the channel. Okay, transmission medium. So this is also about the channel. Remember, sometimes we use the term channel, sometimes we use the medium. Okay. So uh, we we will use these kind of things, eh? channel and also the medium. So the medium consists of guided and also unguided. Guided means that uh, the medium guide the signal from one place to another place. So in order to do that, we need to use a, some sort of cable or wire. So there are a few cables or wire, for example, coaxial cable, twisted pair, fiber optics, and also the waveguide. Okay. And then we have the unguided type of medium. Unguided means that the medium does not guide the wave from one point to another point. In this case, we are using the wireless medium. Okay, medium ini dia tidak guide uh, gelombang yang dihantar. Eh. So gelombang yang dihantar itu boleh pergi. It, uh, the wave can travel at uh, at a broad uh, ways, eh. broad uh, path. Eh at different paths okay gelombang itu boleh lalu pada uh, laluan yang berbeza-beza yang mana dia tidak di guide kan ya yeah? so this one uh, wireless medium we have a terrestrial terrestrial is the within the earth surface space wave free space earth wave nanti kita akan lihat eh? characteristic of the quality determined by the medium and the signal so for guide for the guided, the medium is more important. For the unguided, bandwidth produced by the antenna is more important. So what is this? You will learn later about uh, this in chapter 5, about this kind of uh, fundamental concept. The key, concert, uh, the key concerns are the data rate and the distance. Okay. So why data rate? Okay. 
data rates, uh, for example, uh, for your Unify, for example, Unify broadband, you want to subscribe to the higher data rate, for example, 100 megabit per second, and you need to pay more. Uh, if you want to go higher, for example, 300 megabit per second of data rate, you need to pay more, okay? So, um, and then uh, the distance about from the transmitter to the receiver also affect the data rate, okay? So, both of these are related to each other, okay? The distance also will degrade the data rate uh, transmit from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, and tiki taka. We will look at the relationship between data rate and distance later. Okay. So, um, characteristic of wireless propagations. Uh, so, signals travels along three routes. Okay. So, we have ground wave, sky wave, and also the line of sight. Okay. So what is the ground wave? So, ground wave... Uh, you see that, uh, okay, so this normally from the, uh, from the, from the transmitter receiver uh, at a higher distance. Eh? So you see that, uh, ini daripada pencawang uh, signal, eh? you see that there are, uh, there are tra transceiver, there are transceiver, located at many places, not only at the urban area, but also at the rural area, where this one normally at higher level of uh, height, okay? So the, the wave uh, the wave will be like this, eh? the wheel. So the, the user is over here. So this is the, the ground, okay? This is the ground. And we have many user over here, okay, that use the signal. So the ground wave, uh, the shape of the ground wave like this. Eh? So the waves travel like this. Okay, so this is what we call as a ground wave. So the wave move, the wave travel to the ground. Okay. So this is what we call as a ground wave. And for the sky wave, sky wave normally for the long distance transmissions. Okay. So, for example, here, we have transmitter and receiver, okay? So, and, the, and then this is the atmosphere, okay? This is the atmosphere. So, the transmitter will send the signal to the atmosphere and it will reflect it back to the earth and receive at the receiver side. Okay, so sky wave means that we transmit to the atmosphere and then the atmosphere will reflect back to the earth. So this is what we call as the sky wave. Okay, you see that this is for the amateur radio BBC worldwide service. Uh, so you see that you can listen to the BBC, uh, for example, radio, for example, BBC radio that been transmitted from, from, the, from England. Eh? So the wave, you see that the wave send, uh, the, the wave is transmitted to the atmosphere and then reflected back to the earth. What about line of sight? Line of sight, uh, you see that the transmitter and the receiver must be facing at each other. Okay. So the transmitter and the receiver are facing to each other. Uh, the transmitter can see the, the receiver. It is within the line of sight, within the uh, within your view. So we can see the transmitter within a line of sight. So, so this normally uh, at shorter distance. Okay, this normally at shorter distance. Uh, you see that uh, there's no obstacle. Eh? There's no obstacle between the two. Okay, that means the the antenna, at the transmitter, and also the antenna, at the receiver must facing each other, and there should should not be any obstacles. 
sepatutnya tidak ada penghalang antara kedua-dua ini eh. So both must face each other. So in this case, uh, you can see these kind of things uh, in in university, in UTHM, or maybe at the urban area. Okay, uh, in the in the urban area, for example, in the city, for example, you can see a lot of these kind of things. Okay, for the line of sight uh, communications transmission. Uh, uh, for for simple um, case, yeah. yeah? Um, I'm going to last oh, yeah, time yeah. here. <laughs> Kalau, which is kita call orang tu, okay. and uh, I, sebab saya selalu dapat lain sangkut sangkut, and tiba-tiba dia mati, dia mati sendiri. Okay. Itu itu disebabkan lain uh, saya or lain orang tu yang sebab dudu mati sentuh je, which is kita call orang tu tengah-tengah cakap lah kan Mula after that tiba-tiba senyap and saya pun tak dengar suara dia which is that like which is apa tu orang cakap lain dia or saya yang sangkut. Okay. So uh, for the mobile communications, uh, mm -hmm. it is under the category of a uh, ground wave. Eh? It is under the category of ground wave where uh, it is uh, for example uh, uh, here. Okay. You are from here and you want to, to call your friends. So you send your signal to the uh, to the transceiver located near your place. Okay, they are the base station yang terdekat eh. So these are the base station near your place. And this base station sends to another base stations and maybe to another base stations and a few base stations until received by the other side of your friend okay so um, if the networks is not stable maybe due to the weather or maybe due to the uh, higher usage at the current time maybe the line maybe the system is busy at the time or maybe due to the noise maybe due to the weather so it will disturb the transmission from the transmitter to the receiver. So that's why at some point, uh, the calling is blocked, okay? Atas beberapa faktor, eh? Dia bukan hanya disebabkan oleh satu faktor, dia ada beberapa faktor yang menyebabkan line itu terputus ataupun tiba-tiba uh, block. Dia akan jadi hilang seperti itu, eh? So, um, if you ask me, there are many, many reasons of that. Okay, so you need to see whether it is because of weather, whether it is because of the noise, whether it is because of the number of users at the place, or maybe because of the uh, something problem with the line, for example. We don't know. Okay, so that one is because of the provider, for example. So if you are at the certain coverage, as, as a good, if you are in the good coverage area, you are supposed to get a good quality of signal. So if suddenly the signal is not good, something is wrong with the provider, uh, whether it is at the base station or within the networks. Because you see that the, the process is not only one base station. It is transmitted to a few base stations until received at the, at the other side. So they melalui beberapa base stations, melalui beberapa networks, sehinggalah diterima di bahagian receiver di sebelah sana. So uh, if something happened, in the middle, so that's why you're gonna uh, lose the connections. Okay, the connection itu akan terputus. Okay, so ini ini yang saya tunjuk. Uh, the thing that I show here is a is a basic uh, uh, type of uh, signal routes, eh? either ground wave, sky wave, or line of sight. Okay. Okay, boleh ya? Eh? So. Ah, boleh doktor menjawab. Okay, so uh, okay, class. Uh, for your information, uh, this uh, this concept also been asked in the test and maybe in the final exam. So normally we ask, we also ask about this kind of questions. Okay, where students need to explain about ground wave, sky wave, line of sight. See, 
Okay, ni adalah soalan-soalan. Uh, this one normally are short questions. Eh? Maybe in the test or maybe in the final exam. Normally, we ask this kind of questions. Very basic questions. And also transmission impairments. Uh, these also favorite questions in the test and also in the final exam. Okay, about transmission impairments. Transmission impairments is, is something that uh degrades the quality of the signal being transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver so impairments are merujuk kepada uh, uh, something that affect the transmitted signal that degrades the quality of the signal okay so in your syllabus you will learn about three things that will cause the impairments okay so you see that impairments, any undesired effect on the signal while traveling from the transmitter to the receiver, such as noise, attenuation, interference, and other losses. So in your syllabus, only three kind of impairments that you will learn. Attenuation, noise, interference. Okay. So you see that um, transmission impairments, for the analog system, it will degrade the quality of the signals. Whereas uh, in the digital signal, in the digital system, it will uh, affect the, the bit error. The bit error going to be higher. Okay, dalam digital signal, bit error akan menjadi tinggi disebabkan oleh impairment ini. Okay, because of these impairments, the bit error rate going to be higher. So, what are the cause of the transmission impairments? So these are normally that we ask in the test and also in the final exam. Okay, exactly the same like this. Okay, normally we ask this question in the test and in the final exam. So these are the among the favorite questions. So what is noise? Noise is the random undesired electrical energy that enters the communication system via the circuit or the communication medium. So you see that the noise can be inside the system or the noise can be in the medium. Okay, noise is the small, small, is a small uh, amplitude of signal. Okay, noise ini dia mempunyai amplitude yang sangat kecil tetapi dia mengganggu, it disturbs the transmission signal. Okay, so noise, normally we have a different frequencies. Eh? It is a different frequency signal that uh, disturbs uh, the quality of the signals either in the system or in the channel, in the medium. And then, the second uh, impairment is attenuation. Attenuation, uh, in Malay, we call it as a pahan signal. Okay, attenuation normally due to the distance. As the signal travel at longer distance, uh, the signal will attenuate. Dia akan melemah disebabkan because of the distance. Okay, and then, Another type of uh, impairments is the interference. The cause of impairments, uh, another, uh, the last one would be the interference. So interference is also a noise, but it is a noise that has the same frequency as the transmitted signal. Dia adalah uh, signal yang mempunyai frekuensi yang sama dengan frekuensi signal yang dihantar. Okay, so for example, uh, if you transmit at 1 megahertz frequency, your friend also transmit signal at 1 megahertz. So your friend gonna uh, the signal from your friend will be will interfere, will cause the interference to your transmitted signal. So that's why when we uh, when we transmit signal from the when we transmit signal from the transmitter to the receiver, we need to use a different set of frequencies so that it will not causing the interference. Okay, the interference ini datangnya daripada signal yang mempunyai frekuensi yang sama dengan frekuensi sistem penghantaran. Okay, it will cause the interference. Okay, bit error rate. So bit error rate. Um, is another significant measure of system performance in the 
in terms of noise, uh, okay, is another measure of system performance in terms of noise is a bit eroded. Okay, so ini adalah, uh, uh, these are among the, uh, the parameter that been used to measure the, the noise in the system, especially in the digital system. So in digital system, normally we use the, 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 the parameter bit error rate to determine how big is the noise. Okay, so bit error rate is specified in terms of number of bits that are corrupted or destroyed as the data transmit from the transmitter to the receiver. It cut it. So it is a measure. It is a measurement of uh, how many bits that are corrupted or lost during the transmission from transmitter to the receiver. For example, okay, for example, if I transmit signal 101010 10, 10, and suddenly, okay, suddenly at the receiver, I receive 111010, 10, for example. Okay, so if you see from here, one bit is corrupted. Okay, berbeza daripada, uh, different from the thing that I transmit. Okay, so this is what we call as a bit error. Okay, it's supposed to be zero, but suddenly the receiver interpreted as one. Okay, so... What happened? So bit error, this one is due to the due to the noise. Okay, so that's why the receiver wrongly interpret the received data. Okay, so bit error rate, you see that, uh, for example, uh, bit error rate of 10 power of minus 6. So this how we do the, this how we write the bit error rate. So normally we write the bit error rate like this, eh? 10 yeah. Macam mana kita tulis bit error rate? So normally we write uh, the bit error rate uh, using this kind of format. Uh, 10 power of minus x. Okay. So the x reflect how many bits that have been corrupted. Okay. Selalunya, biasanya dia sepatutnya ada gini eh. 1 uh, one time, eh? so normally, so since this is one, so we don't we don't write this uh, number one actually. Actually, the the way we write is a uh, one multiplied with ten power of minus x. But for simplicity, we remove this one and enough with ten power of minus x. So for example, here ten power of minus six. That means one bit out of 1 million bits transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver will be corrupted. Satu bit daripada satu juta bit yang dihantar akan corrupted. Uh, so, what it means is that, like that. Okay. So, 10 power of minus 6 of bit error rate means that 1 bit out of 1 million bit is corrupted during the transmission. So, you see that uh, if I write if if I write like this, uh, ten power of minus five, so that means one bit out of uh, ten uh, out of hundred thousand bits sent will be corrupted. Okay, satu bit daripada seratus ribu bit yang dihantar will be corrupted. Okay, so you see that um, uh, the higher the magnitudes over here will be the better. Okay, for example, 10 power of minus 12. Uh, one bit out of 10 power of 12 is corrupted during the transmission, which is good compared to the 10 power of minus 6. Because 10 power of minus 6, we have one bit out of 1 million. Satu bit daripada satu juta akan corrupted. However, if I have, uh, if the bit error rate is uh, 10 power of minus 12, satu bit, one bit out of 10 power of 12 is corrupted. Daripada banyak-banyak bit, uh, uh, among the many bits that we send, only one bit is corrupted. So, if you ask me, 
look at the magnitude over here, the higher would be the better. Okay, lagi tinggi dia punya magnitude di sini, lagi baik, uh, better the quality of the transmitted signal. Okay, tadi saya ambil contoh eh, tadi uh, 1 juta, dari 1 bit daripada 1 juta corrupted. Tetapi yang ini, 1 bit daripada 10 kuasa 12 bit yang dihantar corrupted. So that means, lagi sedikit. Uh, so what I mean is that the higher the magnitudes would be the better quality of the signal transmitted. Okay, akan menjadi bad, uh, signal yang dihantar itu semakin baik uh, jika dia punya magnitude ini lebih besar. Okay. So several factor that contributes to the bit error rate antara beberapa faktor yang menyebab yang uh, mengubah suar ya bit error rate ini iaitu uh, the bandwidth. Okay, the higher the bandwidth, the higher would be the bit error rate. Transmission speed, the higher the transmission speed, the higher would be the bit error rate. Transmission medium different uh, depend on the medium type. Some medium types uh, will contribute a lot of noise. And then the environment, okay, the atmosphere, environment. And then the distance, the longer the distance also will contribute uh, uh, worse a bit error rate. Eh? Okay. And then uh, transmitter and receiver performance also. Okay. So, uh, class, eh, tadi, uh, I will repeat again. Uh, if you see here, 10 power of uh, minus, 10 power of minus 2, 10 power of minus 4, uh, 10 power of minus... Um, doctor, yeah. can I ask one question? Yeah. Kalau dia 10 power, uh, 10 power positive 12 or I mean tak ada negative ni sama no, no, we, we normally macam use a negative value. Oh, it's not negative. Uh, yeah, not positive that, value. That, there's no positive value, okay? So, uh, okay. that uh, uh, I, I would just want to show you eh, just this one for example. So, you see that when we say about bit error rate, okay? So, this one is a higher bit error rate. Okay, apabila kita bercerita tentang bit error rate, this one are considered as a higher bit error rate. Because one out, one out, uh, one bit out of a hundred bit is corrupted. So that means the bit error rate is higher. Okay, when the magnitude goes bigger, okay, apabila magnitude ini menjadi besar, that means the bit error rate going to be lower. Okay, itu maksud dia. Okay, because you see that 1 bit out of 10 power of 12 bit is corrupted. So, bit error rate nya sebenarnya rendah. Okay, so uh, ini adalah uh, dari segi minus ini eh. I just want to show you that uh, the bigger the minus here, that means uh, the lower would be the bit error rate, which is better. Okay, uh, tidak ada positif eh. Tidak ada positif. So, kita biasanya tulis dalam ada negatif di sini. Okay, paling paling dahsyat pun biasanya 10 power of minus 2 or 10 power of minus 1 which is uh, is very worse uh, uh, medium type. Eh? So, normally we, we want to achieve uh, 10 power of uh, minus 6 or maybe 10 power of minus 12 if possible. Eh? Okay, so bit error rate ini uh, biasanya uh, for the best case scenario is within a 10 power of minus 5, 10 power of minus 6 or maybe 10 power of minus 10, minus 12. Itu yang terbaik eh. We, want, we don't want to achieve, uh, kita tak nak uh, 10 power of minus 3 eh, which is a very bad transmission medium. Okay, this is a, um, ni, ini boleh dikategorikan sebagai bad uh, transmission medium. Kerana terlalu banyak error eh. Okay. So, Okay, seterusnya, uh, types of uh, electronic communications. Uh, okay, um, 
I just want to explain that uh, previously in the previous semesters, uh, students are confused about the terms of impairment. Uh, I think this is because of the English that students don't understand what is impairment, what is impairment. So you need to know impairment that is uh, something that uh, affect the, trans uh, the quality of the transmitted signal. Okay, so in the previous ex uh, semesters, when we ask about impairments, students provide a different answer, which is wrong. So you need to know about the impairments, okay? And then types of electric, okay, so I proceed. Types of communications uh, can be classified in three ways. Okay, so we have, uh, uh, we can classify the communication system into three ways. Uh, in terms of transmission mode, in terms of analog or digital baseband or broadband transmission. So, macam mana kita nak classify electronic communication system? Ada uh, tiga cara, dari segi transmission mode, dari segi analog or digital, or in terms of baseband or broadband transmission. So, let's look at the first one, transmission mode. So, transmission mode, how we communicate between one point to another point. So the first one is a one-way. One-way communications means that only one uh, person can, uh, only one component can transmit data. For example, uh, televisions, radio, for example, because you only see the televisions, you only hear the radios. It is only one way. You receive a broadcast uh, signal. Okay, you receive <coughs> you receive broadcast signal from the TV station or from the radio station. So it only uh, it is a one way transmission. Itu dipanggil sebagai one way or simplex. And then we have two way communications. Uh, what we call as a duplex. So means that uh, both sides can communicate to each other. Okay. So duplex, we have uh, two, two types, eh? half duplex and full duplex. So half duplex, uh, it is a both for both directions of communications. So I can send data to you, you can send data to me. Okay, but only one transmission at a time. Hanya, pada, hanya satu transmission pada satu-satu masa. For example, this is like the walkie-talkie. Okay, or police radio walkie-talkie. Remember, if you know the walkie-talkie, uh, when you speak, the other side must listen. And when the other side speak, you listen. Okay, so this is the half duplex. Only one way at a time. Okay, and then the other one is a full duplex. Means that both uh, transmission are allowed at the same time. Uh, for example, like your telephone. So you boleh jakap, uh, you can speak simultaneously with the other side. Okay, so this is the full duplex. Uh, so telephone or mobile phone. So because uh, you can you can uh, speak and then uh, the other side speak, so both of you can hear each other. So it can be uh, the signal can be transmitted in both ways. Okay, from transmitter to the receiver and also to the other side. And how we classify the system uh, in terms of analog or digital? Uh, so we can classify the system, communication system, as analog or digital. So if it is an analog system, that means uh, we transmit the signal in analog. Okay. Both info carrier are analogs. So dalam uh, analog system, eh, apakah perbezaannya eh, kalau kita lihat? Okay. So, in analog system, the input system, sorry, the input signal is analog. You transmit as analog. Okay, you transmit as analog and then receive, and then the output is also in term of analog. Uh, so all analog, this is the analog, 
system. Okay, but for digital, uh, there's a beautiful things about digital where we can use both analog and digital. Okay, so you see that digital system uh, in this slide it consists of two types: huh? digital transmission. Okay, digital transmission. And the other one is digital radio. What does it mean? Okay, apa maksud dia? So, for digital transmission, okay, untuk digital transmission, so, uh, you can have a, uh, here, you see that for digital signal, uh, for digital system, the good thing is that you can have input either as analog or you can also have input as digital. Kamu boleh ada dua jenis input eh. No problem. But how the system going to transmit is a different thing. Okay. So you see that the output is also can be as analog. So ini uh, sorry yeah. So the the beautiful thing about the digital system is that it can be uh, it is adaptive. Uh, sorry, it, it is a uh, it can receive a uh, analog and also the digital signal, and it can produce analog or digital at the output. Okay, they will it. Sorry. Yeah. So the output can be analog or digital. Uh, so how this, these uh, two things are transmitted? Macam mana uh, kedua-dua ini berkomunikasi? Eh? So if you see the first one is digital transmissions. Uh, in digital transmissions means that we use the digital input. Okay. There's no analog carrier. And, and that means the signal is transmitted as a digital pulses. Okay. In this case, normally we transmit using the wired cables. Normally. Okay. Because this is, uh, we transmit in terms of digital pulses. Okay. So, dear, uh, it is, um, uh, we transmit Later, you're going to see that we, we use a uh, baseband transmission. Okay, here we use a ba baseband transmission. And then at the receiver side, we produce a digital output. Okay, so uh, in this case, I repeat again, actually uh, the, the input and output can be either analog or digital. Okay, because dalam case ini, input boleh jadi analog or input can also be digital, either one. And then in the transmitter, it will convert the input into digital pulses, transmit to the receiver using a baseband without the carrier. There's no, there's no uh, analog carrier, tidak ada analog carrier dalam case ini eh. So, dia hantar secara digital, in term of digital pulses, receive at the receiver. So, the receiver will do the process, either you want to convert the output into analog or you want to convert the output into digital. So, you have the options. Okay. And then, I want to show about this. Okay. So, digital radio, you see that the word radio means that the signal is transmitted in free space, di udara. So what happened is that, you see, transmitter, and then uh, here we have the antenna, here we have the receiver. Okay, so what happened is that you have the analog or you have the digital input, depends. Okay, the transmitter will convert, uh, first the transmitter will process the data into digital. 
Okay, transmitter akan proses dalam bentuk digital data. Okay, and here we have the another input from the carrier, analog carrier. Analog carrier will be will also be the input to the transmitter. So what the purpose of the analog carrier is that so that we can do the modulation process and we can convert it into the uh, electromagnetic wave. So in this case, you will transmit the digital data as analog. Okay. Remember, if we transmit in terms of electromagnetic wave, for sure it is a analog. But we transmit a digital data. Okay, so process ini, process modulation dengan analog carrier akan menghasilkan gelombang elektromagnetik yang membawa digital data. Contoh eh, you punya mobile phone. Your mobile phone is a good example of this digital radio where uh, everything is processed in term of digital. Semua benda diproses dalam bentuk digital. But when it transmit, the wave is electromagnetic wave. So the wave is analog. Okay, there's no wave in digital. Eh? So the wave is analog but carries the digital information. Okay. So you transmit uh, the wave, electromagnetic wave. So this is analog. Contoh yang lain. Eh? Astro, for example. Astro is a digital TV. But when it transmits through the satellite, it is transmitted as an analog. Dia dihantar secara analog melalui gelombang electromagnet. But the signal carries digital information. Okay. The receiver will process in terms of digital. Okay. Dia akan proses secara digital. And it has the options to convert the data either into analog or convert into digital. Uh, so this is the beautiful thing about the digital system where you can use uh, both uh, analog and digital like this. Okay. So dear, uh, another good thing is that we can transmit at longer distance using a digital system. Okay. So ini boleh faham eh? Okay. Remember, for the digital radio, we use the analog carrier. Berbeza dengan yang tadi, in digital transmission, there's, there's no analog carrier. Tidak melibatkan analog carrier. Itu perbezaan dia. Dan dalam case ini, in this case, we are using a low frequency. Compared to this one, we use a high frequency, radio frequency or a very high frequencies. Okay. Ini kalau ada soalan, boleh terus tanya. If you have question, you can ask, okay? If you don't have question, I will proceed. Oh, sudah 10 lebih, eh, sekejap. Okay, I just, uh, maybe this is going to be the last slide, maybe, okay? So, ini slide yang terakhir lah, eh. So, lepas ni, okay. Uh, last, okay? Slide yang terakhir, eh, okay? So, what is the advantage of digital transmissions? Uh, first, about the digital technology, uh, it is will give you a low-cost uh, system. Eh? So, uh, this one is also subjective. Uh, different uh, depend on the applications. Okay, some applications, uh, of course, it needs a higher cost. Some application is uh, will give you a lower cost. So the if we look at the uh, broad perspective, uh, actually this will give you a lower cost. Eh? In terms of integrity, uh, digital system we can transmit a longer distance with a good quality of lines. Okay, capacity utilizations, how many uh, how many users we can support? Uh, we can support higher number of users, and we can transmit many signals together using multiplexing. Okay, so kalau kita gunakan digital system, kita boleh support uh, banyak users. Okay, and we can 
hunt, uh, we can transmit many signals together using multiplexing. Why? Because we treat the system, uh, because the signal only has a two possibilities, either logic one or logic zero. So we can treat all kind of signals equally. Okay, we can merge all kind of signals and then we can transmit together. Because all signals, it has only two possibilities, either logic one or logic zero. Berbeza dengan analog signal, where it has an infinite shape. Okay. And then, digital system, uh, we can introduce uh, security and privacy. We can do the encryption. Kita boleh buat encryptions to protect the data from uh, hackers, for example. Okay, so this only possible for the digital data. Okay, we can process it for the digital data. So we can embed in the, we can embed the encryption uh, formatting eh, inside the data. Integration. Ah, so this is the, the good thing that I mentioned previously. You can treat analog and digital data similarly. So kalau you have a digital system, you boleh treat uh, analog and digital data in a similar way. Okay, the process going to be uh, the same. Eh? So if you, if you have an input digital or analog, you can process it and you can convert it to the output either analog or digital. Ini yang saya jelaskan tadi, eh, the beautiful thing about the digital system. It can do the integrations of analog and digital processing. Okay, so um, itu sahaja eh. Harap uh, pelajar tidak mengantuk eh. Sorry eh, awal-awal ni ada banyak uh, theoretical concept. So saya rasa mungkin ada ramai yang mengantuk eh. Disebabkan oleh explanation ini. Uh, don't worry, nanti akan ada pengiraan eh. Di akhir uh, chapter 1 akan ada pengiraan eh. I think you like it. Uh, we have a lot of calculations starting from uh, slide 46 and above. Ada beberapa calculations which is uh, maybe you will feel excited. Okay. So for, for the beginning, a lot of theoretical concept. So it is a lot of uh, fundamental thing that you need to adapt. Okay. You need to to learn. Okay. So, sekarang saya ambil attendance. So, I will uh, you can ready with the QR code. Okay. So, semua boleh buka QR code. Uh, boleh scan. Eh? So, boleh scan eh, QR code. Uh, kalau ada kawan-kawan kamu yang uh, terlupa nak scan, uh, boleh ingatkan dia mungkin dia tertidur. Okay. So, sambil kita menunggu kawan-kawan kamu scan, uh, kalau ada apa-apa nak tanya soalan, boleh tanya sekarang. Eh. So, sambil kita menunggu pelajar-pelajar uh, scan, uh, so you boleh tanya soalan, no problem. Siapa yang tak dapat scan, boleh bagi tahu saya, nanti saya masukkan. Ada masalah untuk scan ke? Uh, yeah. Kenapa nak tanya soalan eh? Layar aku ni kenapa? Okay, semua dah? Belum. 
Ada lagi yang belum? Uh, doktor. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Saya tak dapat scan. Nama siapa? Uh, Syahmina. Syahmina. Sudah scan tak? Tapi uh, saya baru join lah. Baru daftar. Oh baru daftar. Okey okey. Syahmina nanti saya update lagi patutnya ada dekat sini eh. You dah tadi hantar manual ke dalam sistem? Dalam sistem. Bila daftar tadi eh? Ah baru pagi tadi. Syahmina. Okey tak apa nanti saya akan take note. Syahmina. Okey uh, eh saya ambil pen sekejap. Um, macam mana? Uh, ejaan nama macam mana? S-Y S-Y-A-H M-I-N-A eh? Uh, ah yeah. ya. Binti? Binti Ruslan. R-U-S Okay. Match number? A-E 190132 Okay. Jadi saya take now. Okay. Yang lain so, sudah eh? Raja Raja lain sudah? Sudah Dr. Okay, so Dada. kalau sudah Ada yang belum, ada yang belum Ada yang boleh, ada yang belum Ah, Siapa belum? Cepat, cepat Fari Saikal Nama dia ada kot, nombor 19 Mana dia? Fari Saikal bin Kari Mana dia? Ada yang ada kat sini kan? Ada, ada Bawa nombor 18 tu ah, Tak, dia datang kelas lah tadi? Uh, dia ada dalam ni <laughs> Okey. Dia Okey yang lain dah eh? Ah uh, doktor. Doktor nombor apa Mana dia? Saya Danisha. Danisha ada eh datang eh? Datang. Danisha? Uh, datang. Danisha ada sini? Tak ada. Ya okay, saya dah tu. Ada dia. Okay. So, tak ada lagi eh? Ada dia. Ada lagi? Siapa lagi yang belum datang? Eh, yang belum scan? Tak ada eh? So, four person eh? Empat belajar absent eh? Okay. So uh, itu sahaja pada hari ini. So see you again uh, next week. Uh, so today I already record the lecture session. So saya akan nanti saya akan upload dalam YouTube eh. So you boleh tengok dalam YouTube lah nanti eh. So itu sahaja. So thank you. So see you again next week. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you doctor. 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 Thank you doctor.